Hello, this is Douglas Rumbaugh. Now, a while back, I believe it was two summers ago, August 2012, I uploaded my first video to this channel, and the topic of that video was basic Linux command line. I believe it was titled Back to Basics. At the time, I had been using Linux for maybe two or three weeks, and I was not particularly knowledgeable. If anything, I made the videos just to help me learn. I I learn by teaching others. It's I find that's the most effective way to learn something, and also to test your understanding of it. And as a result, there are obviously mistakes. As and several mistakes were kindly pointed out to me in the comments. Mostly, it was involving naming the naming of things. Uh, so I'd like to rectify that by creating a new video covering the same content except perhaps in a slightly greater depth and illustrating my uh, additional understanding of the subject matter. As a result this first video is probably going to cover less than all than back to basics did. I'm going to keep it strictly to command line navigation as well as what the terminal actually is. Uh, without further ado then let's hop right in. Uh, what you're seeing on your display right now is the terminal emulator that I'm using. It's going to look different for you depending on your configuration, the distribution, and the terminal emulator that you're using, but they all behave in pretty much the same way. To execute a command on the terminal, you type in the command and press enter, and that's just about all you have to do. The first command I want to show you is one that's not terribly useful, but um, it's just because it displays information that at least on my configuration is already visible but it's print working directory pwd and all this is going to do is it displays your working directory onto the terminal now when I say working directory I mean the directory that you are in when you execute a command it is executed in this directory if you edit a file and or if you save a file it's going to be saved to this directory unless you um, specify otherwise. And don't be confused by the word print either. It just means print to the display. It has nothing to do with a printer. Now, what it shows you is the f the absolute path to the directory that you are in. It starts here with a forward slash. Keep that in mind. In Windows it uses backslashes. Linux is forward slashes and this original forward slash is the root file system. It is the lowest level that you can go. You can't, there are no directories below this one. It contains everything on the system. The next one here is home. The home directory contains all of your user files. So what's going to happen is every user on your system will have a directory within slash home that is named after them. This next slash means that we're on a new, a new directory level, so it separates the directory names from each other and keeps them from all running together. And Douglas, which is my username, that's my user directory. And then within Douglas, I'm an, in an additional directory here. And when I say directory, I mean folder. It's a collection of files, essentially, that's used for organization of the system. Now that we can see what my working directory is, it'd be useful to know what is inside of that working directory. And for that, we're going to want to use a command called list, ls. And when you use ls, what's going to happen is it's going to create on the display a list of all of the files that are within and directories as well. Of course, there are no directories in here. They're all .txt files, text files. But it will show you everything inside of your current directory. Um, I am going to quickly just hop back here and use list again. This will show you the difference between files and directories. In my configuration, the directories are bold and blue and files are not bold and white. There are a few additional options on the list command. Uh, you can use dash L uh, and on the command line you use the minus sign, the dash, tack, whatever you want to call it to indicate options. 
and L stands for long. So this is going to provide you with lots of additional information about the files and directories on the system. Well, in your working directory. Uh, the first letter here is going to be a D, an L, or a minus sign. D stands for directory, and it, of course, tells you that that is a directory. L stands for link, which I will cover in a later video. And the minus sign, or dash, means that it's a file. Next come the permissions. Uh, I'm not going to cover too deeply what these mean, but R is read, W is write, and X is execute. Also visible are the username of the owner of the file, the group to which the owner of the file belongs, the size of the file or directory, the last modified date, and the name. Now the size is shown in terms of bytes, which it's useful, but there's a more easily readable way to say it. So if you were to say ls, and again, go for the long option, but add an h, the h stands for human readable. And what that's going to do is convert those byte file sizes into kilobytes and gigabytes and megabytes. So a kilobyte is 1,000 bytes, a, um, a megabyte is 1,000 kilobytes, and a gigabyte is 1,000 megabytes. Uh, I'm saying 1,000. There's a bit of contentious is issue the size of a gigabyte, but I'm going to say 1,000. It's simple and easy to remember, especially for hard drive space. It's the one that makes the most sense. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm rambling. So using that, you can get more information about the files. Uh, also, there's a special kind of file or directory that's often called a dot file because their names begin with a period. An example would be .bashrc, which is a file that exists in everyone's home directory on a Linux system. Uh, these are hidden, so you'll note that in this list, .bashrc does not show up, even though I have just asserted that everyone has one. And there, in order to see these hidden files, you have to use ls and then a dash a, and that's going to show all of the dot .files. These files are hidden generally because you're not going to have to do much with them unless you really want to get into the nitty gritty of system configuration. For the average user, they're not terribly important and being able to see them would just clutter the home directory. See, there's a lot of files and directories in here versus if I just keep them hidden. It's much cleaner and much easier to find what I'm looking for. The other command that I want to show you today, which is one that I have already used, if you've caught it, uh, to get to where I am now in my home directory, is the CD option. Now CD stands for change directory, and it lets you switch your working directory to any other directory on the system. And you can do that with either what are known as absolute paths or relative paths. Now a relative path would be, for example, if I wanted to go into this tutorial directory again, I could just type in tutorial directory. This is a relative path because it uses my current working directory as a starting point. So it is assumed by the system that when I type in tutorial directory, what I mean is slash home slash Douglas slash tutorial directory. And you'll note that either way I will get to the same place. Um, so I'll go into tutorial directory. Now I want to get back to my home directory so I can demonstrate that the other way works as well. And when I did an ls-a earlier, you may have noted the existence of this period and these two periods. So this period here just represents the current directory. The two periods is the parent directory and all that means is the directory that the directory that I'm currently in exists inside of. In this case, my um, path here, I'll just use pwd to show it, I am in slash home slash Douglas slash tutorial directory. The parent of tutorial directory is Douglas. So if I wanted to go back to Douglas, 
I could either use the absolute path slash home slash Douglas. And by absolute path, what I mean is the path starting from root, the very first possible directory, just slash. Or if I didn't feel like typing out as much, I could use two periods, the dot dot and press enter and I will go back to the parent directory. So essentially the dot dot is going to move you backwards one directory. The other cool thing uh, here, let me just show you, this is using the absolute path. Okay, so as you can see that took me to the same place that using the relative path up here did. Uh, but the other cool thing that you can do with the parent directory is you can travel to the parent of your parent and so on. Essentially all you have to do is do a dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot however many you want. And for each pair of periods within this cd command you're going to go back one directory. So I'm going to go back to my home directory. Then I'm going to go back or my you know my user directory. Then I'm going to go back to the home directory and then I should go back to root. And as you can see, I have gone to root. Uh, BWD root. Okay. Now there's one more aspect of the CD command that I want to show off. And well, not so much the CD command as the Unix system. This symbol here, you may have seen it floating in blue beside my bash prompt. Uh, the tilde. In Unix and Linux, the tilde represents your home directory. So if I were to cd into tilde, it's going to take me to slash home slash Douglas. This varies. It's going to take you to slash home slash whatever your username is. It's going to take you to your user's home directory. So it varies the, the, what the tilde actually means. Absolute, the absolute value of that is going to vary depending on the user on the system. But it's a very convenient feature to have and you'll probably find yourself using that a lot as a shortcut instead of having to do various um, transfers to parent or an absolute path every time you want to get back to your home directory which is something you're going to want to do an awful lot. Uh, two last notes about CD. If you were to have a directory with a space in the name and unfortunately I don't yes I do here I'll just use this virtual box VMs as an example if I want to go into that directory and I use CD I can go virtual box space VM s and you'll note it's telling me that there's no directory virtual box the reason for that is that in Linux spaces are parsed as dividers between arguments to your command so when you say cd, that is your command. It's the program you're executing. The arguments of cd are the options you're passing into it. Well, not the options. The um, In this case, the arguments will be the directories. So it's going to say, all right, I'm going to change directory into virtual box. And then the space says, okay, virtual box is the first argument. It's the directory I'm changing into. Then there's another argument here called VMs. So it, it's treating it as two separate directories. If I wanted to get into that directory, I would have to do one of two things. I could use an escape sequence. The backslash key generates what's called uh, an escape sequence. It's the escape character is what the backslash is called. And it's going to tell the system, okay, what follows is a space. But we're not going to treat that space in the way we would normally treat a space. We're going to essentially ignore the existence of that space and consider it as part of this file name. And you'll note that that is going to take me into the directory VirtualBox VMs. The other option is to use quotation marks. So when you have a pair of quotation marks, the system is going to take everything inside of it exactly as written. Um, it's going to say, okay, we're going to treat everything within this quotation marks as one argument, which means that the space essentially just becomes part of the file name again. And it'll take us into there as well. Word to the wise, it's best when possible to avoid using spaces in your directory names and in your file names. 
because it just it becomes annoying if you forget to put in the quotation marks or the backslash and also uh, it's not so obvious here but sometimes it becomes difficult when you're looking at the LS dialog to see whether that space is part of the file name or whether they're they are two distinct directories avoid spaces when you can essentially my preferred method is like I did here with the tutorial directory is just replacing spaces with a hyphen it works well it doesn't require you to press the shift key like it would if you were to use an underscore or something uh, that's my method that I use okay so we're getting a little bit long here just to quickly recap the commands that I have shown you the PWD is print working directory and all that that's going to do is display the directory that you are currently in. To see what's inside of that directory, you'll use the ls command. The If you pass different options to ls, you can get slightly different output. The lh is going to show you additional information in addition to parsing the sizes in a human readable form with kilobytes, megabytes, and gigabytes and the ls-a is going to show you hidden files that begin their name with a period. And finally we covered the change directory command which is going to allow you by giving it either an a path that is absolute that is in reference to root slash or relative which would be for example just typing in server 2012 and assuming everything in front of it essentially changing directory into a directory within your working directory. Uh, we'll move you into that directory and of course two periods represents the parent directory and we'll move you backwards and the tilde represents your users home directory and will take you essentially to in this case slash home slash Douglas. Okay so thank you for watching um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I will do my best to get to them in as timely a manner as possible. Uh, tune in next time, and I'll be covering working with these directories. So I'll show you how you can remove directories and make directories, and also rename directories. I will see you then. Uh, thank you for watching, and as always, have a nice day.